What's up? We're back with another informational video. Today, I'm going to talk about your training mindset and setting goals. And this will apply really to any goals you're setting, but I'm going to focus more on fitness goals. And, you know, there are those who like to train for fun. Sure, that's fine. But this video is more for those who have a specific goal in mind, say to lose 10 pounds or to gain size and strength over time. Those are my two primary examples in this article that you can read in the description below. And that takes us right to our first point, which is setting your actual goal. And it can be specific. It can be a little bit more vague. I use that example of losing weight as a specific goal where you have a time frame of, say, three months. You want to lose 10 pounds and you can track that pretty consistently throughout your, you know, throughout the fulfillment of that goal. And then for more generic goals, say mine of getting size and strength over time, that means I'm going to need to define that more clearly as I go, but I have that idea in my head of what I want to do. And that's going to help me if I ever have those days where I don't really feel like working out or I don't feel like eating right. I can lean on that why, you know, my purpose. This is my goal. This is why I'm doing it. And it's a lot more easier to stay disciplined if you have that goal. And how are you going to achieve it? This is our next step, which is having a vision. So if you want to lose 10 pounds in three months, for example, like I said, you have that you can, you can have a pretty specific guideline where I'm, okay, I want to lose about 0.8 pounds per week. And then if I have a more generic goal, you know, mine of just gaining size and strength over time, that means, okay, well, I know I'm going to need to learn about fitness. I'm going to need to learn about nutrition and that's a good starting place. And over time you can refine that as you go along. Now, as you're on this journey, you don't want to overthink everything in that case where you're losing about 0.8 pounds per week. You know, a lot of times you might gain a pound one week and then think, oh no, my progress is off. Well, you know, take a step back, realize that not all of your weight loss progress will be linear. It's not going to be a, a consistent downward trend. So don't overreact. You know, you might want to make a, a minor change and then see how your body adjusts to that change over the next couple of days. And in my case of gaining size and strength, one of the things that I did was say I squatted 475 pounds that next week I want to do that again to prove to myself, yeah, I can still do that. I'm only improving and I only wanted to go up and up and up. Obviously that's not the best thing to be doing. What I should have done is take a step back, realize, okay, my long-term vision is to gain size and strength. And that means I need to allow my body to recover. I need to have some intense days and then some days where I back up a little bit and go light. And Obviously though, you need balance. And this is the next point of finding that balance because you don't wanna to be too passive with your goals either. So you don't wanna to make too minor of an adjustment to your diet, for example, or else you'll, you'll miss your ultimate goal altogether. You don't wanna overreact, but you don't wanna underreact basically. And then as far as lifting, just say that I have a day that's scheduled as a light day, but I feel really good. I'll go heavy, why not? I, I don't wanna, stick to a rigid goal and you know skip out on potential opportunities that are there all of this all, all of it requires balance all of this goal setting um, finding that vision and achieving your goal requires balance and it requires being honest with where you're at now one of the strategies that i like to do when pursuing any goal is playing mental games with myself and i know that sounds a little bit funny so i'll give a few examples one thing is creating a competition for example, in the gym, if I see someone deadlifting 315 pounds, I say, all right, you, I don't know who you are. I don't really care. I'm challenging you in my brain and I'm going to go ahead and bench press that. And it's like, ha, I got you random guy who doesn't even know I exist. Uh, that's obviously supposed to be a little bit funny of an example, but you can use that kind of competitive drive to your advantage. Other cases say I want to hit eight reps at a weight that I'm not sure I can hit eight reps at. In my head, before I'm starting that set, I'll think, okay, I wanna hit 12. And then as I'm going, I hit six, seven. Oh, wow, I'm already there. And you know, you have that kind of stretch goal of 12 in your mind when really you knew all along you wanted to get eight and you sort of tricked yourself. That's the same kind of technique I used when I was a student. I would force myself, or not force myself, but I would try to force myself to remember material after reading it one time. and. Obviously, that was not easy at first, but it required me to focus. And over time, I developed a skill of being able to focus more intensely for longer periods of time. So whatever your goal is, find different mental tricks you can use to your advantage. 
And you know, on the opposite side of that, you don't want to take the easy, the easy way out. The more you take that easy road, the more likely you are to do it again. So say I'm running and, oh man, I, I'm making all these excuses in my head. My back is tight or my knee hurts, whatever it is. We've all been there. Running kind of sucks. If you just give in and you say, okay, I'm just going to stop running. You're just going to get mentally weak. It's going to snowball. So in those cases, what I do to myself is, oh, you want to quit? Too bad. Now you're going to have to run faster. And or, okay, fine, you want to quit? Now we're going to run an extra half mile. So just different things like that to callous your mind are going to help in any kind of goal. Another example that I use, which is different from that weight loss or just gaining strength over time, is recovering from an injury. And while this isn't the same type of goal, it's still a goal where, let's say, I have a muscle strain or a herniated disc or a torn ACL, you need to first establish your goal, obviously recover, but what does that mean? Say you're an athlete, I wanna get back on the field. Say you're a power lifter, I wanna set a new deadlift PR. So you have your goal in mind of where you are right now with your injury and where you wanna to get to. Then you need to develop that vision. Does that mean you need surgery? Do you need to do any kind of physical therapy, um, different rehab things you might need to do um, just on the daily, you know? Mm -hmm daily recovery and mobility training? Do you need to take an ego check and start from ground zero and build your lift back up to where it was? That's the kind of vision you're going to need to establish. And then within that, you need to take advantage of the opportunities you have throughout the process and don't mentally get set back by any roadblocks you face along the way. This is that section when we're, you know, finding balance, finding the balance. We are, you know, not overthinking every little thing that happens. And, you know, you're just trying to be mentally strong throughout the process to reach your ultimate goal of recovering. So I hope this kind of helps you as far as the mentality you should take. I think it applies very good to training, but obviously this could apply to any aspect of life. Let me know what you think. Everyone kind of thinks of goal setting differently, but this is how I approach it. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.